RYD Cup. All right, so we left off yesterday with the challenge. Uh, okay, um, the comfort challenge. So, um, supposedly, allegedly, yesterday you uh, started proposing solutions instead of asking other people, you know, what they want to eat or do or whatever. Which, once again, I've been kind of doing for a while now because that's my nature. But uh, I've been working on the opposite for a while now, just trying to be more inclusive, as I said. So, for you most of you the opposite and if you are like me if you have been the proposer uh, in years past then go ahead and try what, what I'm doing and try to be more inclusive and get more people's uh, opinions all right so today is lifestyle design in action remember this is the 2009 updated edition so he throughout this book you'll see paragraphs like these next couple that are um, after they read the 2007 book, they took action and, you know, wrote back to him through via his blog or whatever. Uh, I'm a musician, there you go, who got your book because Derek Sivers at CD Baby recommended it. Checking Pareto's Law, I realized that 78% of my downloads came from just one of my CDs. 55% of my total download income came from only five songs. It showed me what my fans are looking for and allowed me to showcase those on my website. Downloads are the way to go. iTunes sells the song and CD Baby direct deposits it to my account. Fully automated once the recording is done. There are some months I can live off of download income. That's, that's huge for a musician because a lot of them struggle with money. Uh, once I finish paying off debt, it should be no problem to travel as an artist and create new fans all over the world and have a cyber income stream. Victor Johnson. As for outsourcing, quote unquote, your banking, any company that needs to take checks should consider a lockbox solution. Just about any bank that does business banking offers it. All checks go to a P.O. box at the bank. I've never heard of that. Uh, the bank processes the checks and deposits them and according to your instructions can send you a file of all the checks that are deposited. Normally this can be done in either a flat Excel or other file type that can inter interface with any accounting system from Excel uh, to Quicken to SAP quite cost effective. So it comes out in a file that's uh, compatible with your accountant software or your software. I never ever heard of that. That's really cool. Learn something new. Once again, yes, I have read this book. Well, actually, you know what? I read the 2007 book. I've never read the 2009 book. So there you go. That's new information for me. The low information, speaking of information, the low information diet. Uh, cultivating, this is chapter six. Cultivating Selective Ignorance. What information consumes is rather obvious. It consumes the attention of its recipients. Hence, a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention and a need to allocate that attention efficiently among the overabundance of information sources that might consume it. Uh, Herbert Simon, recipient of Nobel, Nobel Memorial Prize, in economics and the A.M. Turing Award the Nobel Prize of Computer Science. Reading, after a certain age, diverts the mind too much from its creative pursuits. Any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking. Albert Einstein. Hmm. Interesting. And, and I would say that the modern day, because remember Einstein was from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I, I forget when he passed away, but that was his error. So reading then was the way that most people got information, reading newspapers, reading books, reading journals, magazines. Uh, now it's the Internet. So if you change reading to surfing the web... <laughs> After a certain age, diverts the mind too much from his creative pursuits. Any man who surfs the web too much and uses his, his own brain too little falls into lazy, lazy habits of thinking. So, yeah, I, I think if you replace reading, which is kind of, most people don't do it anymore, to surf in the web, we, do, we tend to get all our information from the Internet now, you know, including YouTube videos like you're watching. 
if you do that too much and take too much time, that's taking your mind away from, once again, what Tim calls important things or mission critical things. I hope you're sitting down. Take that sandwich out of your mouth so you don't choke. Cover the baby's ears. I'm going to tell you something that upsets a lot of people. There he goes, ruffling the feathers. I never watched the news and have bought one single newspaper in the last five years in Stansted Airport in London, and only because it gave me a discount on a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> okay. I would claim to be Amish, but the last time I checked, Pepsi wasn't on the menu. Uh, how obscene. I call myself an informed and responsible citizen. How do I stay up to date with current affairs? I'll answer all of that, but wait, it gets better. I usually check business email for about an hour each Monday, and I never check voicemail when abroad. Never, ever. But what if someone has an emergency? It doesn't happen. My contacts now know that I don't respond to emergencies. So the emergencies somehow don't exist or don't come to me. Problems, as a rule, solve themselves or disappear if you remove yourself as an information bottleneck and empower others. That's a lot right there in that paragraph. Um, other people's problems, which they're only too glad to, to share with you, are diminish in, in importance and emergency. With it. Put it this way, the problem's going to get solved or it's not, but if it's not your problem, you know, that's, that's what he talked about, about, you know, people don't want to hear it and it hurts to hear but if it's really not your problem, why are you taking your time to deal with it? Oh, well, you know, I love that person. Uh, well, yeah, if you love them, you're going to get involved. You know, I, I get it. Um, but, <laughs> you know, to have the freedom he's talking about. And, and, and here's the other thing. Let me say this, too. Tim, as far as I know right now, uh, does not have a partner. He's alone from what I could tell from watching his, his recent YouTube stuff. Uh, maybe that's by choice. Maybe he wants to keep his private life private, and I understand and respect that. But throughout his life, um, even though he wrote a book, Four Hour Body, in which there's a chapter about sex, and he researched sex uh, like he researched <laughs> entrepreneurship and being a chef and nutrition and bodybuilding and everything else he's he's been he was very thorough in his research of having sex with women um but still he's alone i think and that might be a reason is his unwillingness to let other people um suck his time <laughs> so, there you go I'm talking about sex and I said suck his time <laughs> my bad no pun intended seriously uh, I wasn't making a funny there I just I, I call them time suckers right but he doesn't want people to put their problems on him and if you think about it if you've ever been in a long-term relationship or you are in a long-term relationship now that's exactly what you do <laughs> in a relationship um, just a quick aside my my girl um, who I'm seeing over here, uh, wrote me this morning, because we know the good morning, good morning, whatever, and tonight's the night I pick her up. Now, she works normally Saturdays. I pick her up, and then she spends the, the, the rest of the weekend over here tonight, Sunday, and the Sunday night. I drop her off before work Monday morning, and she's sick. She got food poisoning from the local food market. She, she always gets food, you know, because she's so tired from work. She grabs food at the market, 30, 40 baht. It's cheap. It's very, very cheap to live in Thailand, especially for Thai people. And uh, so she got some Thai food, I think kapow, which is a very popular dish here, and just happened to be bad. Something sat out too long. Something had bugs on it. It's not super sanitary here. Now, millions and millions of people eat the food, and they're fine, but every now and then you're going to get sick just because it's not regulated like it is in, in a lot of the rest of the world, like like America, where I feel it's over-regulated. And food poisoning still happens in America, too, and E. coli and chicken and recalls on food and all that crap. So I guess it's a global thing. Anyway, she got sick. So my natural thing is how can I help, right? We're dating, so I, I care about her. I want to help her. Right? That's your natural instinct. And Tim's like, oh, that's her problem. <laughs> Make her fucking deal with it. You know, I, 
you're not going to have a lot of success in a relationship if you if you do. Oh, you're sick. Oh, so sorry. Well, that sucks. It. How does that impact me having sex today? You know what I mean? Like you, you just you can't come from that frame point when it comes to somebody that you care about, somebody you you have feelings for, or you know whatever somebody you're in a relationship with. If you're committed to a relationship, it's your job to care about their problems, right? You can't shut them out. So. And I was the one agreeing with them two days ago about friends and family and cutting them out. But when it comes to people, you know, you care about, I'm not going to say you love because I've known this girl for a month. That's ridiculous. But I care about her. So, of course, I want to help her and, and do whatever I can. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to do some food shopping, you know, because she is coming over eventually. <laughs> uh, and since she took the day off of work, I'll, I'll actually probably pick her up early and then just let her chill here and relax here with me, get her drinks, get her fluid, whatever, um, you know, stop at the pharmacy, get her some medicine for upset stomach, you know, diarrhea, all the, all the stuff you get from food poisoning. And I'll take care of her today. Cause why? Cause she's sick and I care about her. So I had other plans today to do some other stuff, but I put that on hold because she's more important to me. So, um, I was married for 10 years, dated another lady for five <laughs> So, on this one thing, <laughs> maybe maybe my advice <laughs> is a tad bit better than Timmy's. Because <laughs> as far as I know, he's 40 years old and alone. Um, and that could be by choice, too. More and more people these days are like, you know what? A relationship's too much work. I'm just going to focus on me. And that's fine. If that's your course of action, if that's Tim's course of action, I'm not going to judge. You know, as long as you're happy... It, you don't have to do what I do. You don't have to be me to be happy. I, I hope I've stressed that enough last year with the other book and with this book. I keep saying your mileage may vary. And what I mean by that is you do you. You do what makes you happy. And that can be 180 degrees different than what Tim does or what I do. Right? But what we're doing, Tim and I, works for us. And we're throwing out ideas and, and putting out concepts and thoughts and challenging you to think different ways so you can find what makes you happy. And sometimes that will be completely different from what makes us happy. So I love Tim. He's awesome. I've gotten so much already from this book and we're just cracking the shell. You know, the egg hasn't even come out yet to fry up. Um, but on this thing, I'm like, you know... It, when you're dealing with somebody you care about and you're dealing with a relationship that isn't harmful and doesn't take away from your production and doesn't stop you from getting your goals, which, you know, the, the one I'm talking about doesn't do any of those things, unlike the one I had last year. Um, you know, it, yeah, you, you, you do make other people's problems yours. You do make other people's, uh, you do give other people your time as valuable as your time is. You just, to, to, to me, um, taking care of this girl at this point is mission critical. Now, am I going to marry her? I don't know. Who the, who the fuck knows? Anybody who tells you they know it's going to happen six months or a year from now is lying because it's out of your control. Shit happens. Things grow or they don't grow. It's, it's whatever. But right now, where we're, where we're at, I'm going to take care of her today and I'm putting everything else aside. So there is that, right? So that, I'm going to end it. It's over 10 minutes already. Um, but yeah, just obviously, uh, these are not rules that you must abide by. These are ideas and concepts that you can use or not use, you know. So I guess that's the best way to say it. Y'all be good. Have a great day.